pink sticky note taped to my bathroom mirror saying that dreams don't work unless you do but also goals need to fail why do we need dreams and goals why are we taught as kids that to be successful you need to have goals but what if you don't succeed the fear of failure today i want to inform you guys that you don't have to meet your goals and it's okay to fail today i'll be covering the differences between goals and expectations when do your goals turn into your expectations? And how to set goals for yourself? So what are the differences between goals and expectations? I remember when I was four years old, we built our brand new house. Me and my siblings decided the day that they poured cement for our concrete slab that we were gonna put our handprints in there and carve our initials. But that's permanent. The only thing to break up concrete is a jackhammer. Your goals should not be like that. Your goals need to be flexible so that you don't have to expect to meet them. A study by Dr. Caroline Catherine states that people need to fail to become successful. Can any of us imagine coming into school or going to a job and not messing up or meeting a deadline? No one is perfect. You have to fail sometimes. Goals need to be based off your wants and needs. Keep them in focus so you're flexible and process the achieving of them. Goals take time and improvement. This helps, you, this helps you stay focused so you avoid your expectations. It doesn't matter if you're not satisfied, whether it's positive or negative. People who set goals are successful. Scienceofpeople.com says that students who set goals can be 175% faster at learning through school. So I wish I would've knew that in August, but that's okay. Not all goals are equal. They should never be unmotivating or negative. If you do, if you set a negative goal for yourself, your brain can trick it into thinking that's too easy to accomplish or that I already did accomplish it. My personal background to this is whenever I go into a tennis match, I think I cannot double deep ball or miss my serve. Well, then I think negative about myself and I mess up and miss my serve. So when do your goals turn into expectations? Strict expectations lower confidence and increase your pressure to make your goals. When expectations are too low, you can kind of get bored and feel like you don't even want to process and achieve your goals. Understand that there's still value and allow your goals to be self-improving. I, when I set my own goals, like to set lower goals for myself to achieve a higher goal. Um, Mindtools.com has a two acronyms, an ABC and a SMART goal, so you achieve, believe, and you commit, or you can um, specific, measurable, achieve, realistic, and time bound. I also love to set visual ways. I'm a very visual person. So in the beginning, I talked about a pink sticky note. I learned from a speaker at a conference last summer that if you see something or you write it down, you are easier to process it. So I had a sticky note taped to my bathroom mirror. You can have a lock screen to your phone or anything. Like I said, I set smaller goals for myself. This year with tennis, I, as a team and myself, said I wanted to make it to the state championship, individual or team-wise. I then set smaller goals throughout my year to train harder in January and to be self-motivated. Then throughout the season, we decided to set smaller goals as far as not losing 0-9 to Davies, but that still happens. So. Um, so then once you get those smaller goals, I really feel like I get a lot of adrenaline and then I just get pumped. You, why would you not want to meet your higher goals in your life? So today I went over the differences of goals and expectations. When goals turn into expectations and how to set your own self goals. So I hope that you can get your own visual way, whether it's a sticky note and push yourself to meet your goals and your dreams.